There's a great image which I find very useful, that when you have a flashlight and you focus the light on this and that, things come in to draw your attention, and we build a world out of what the light shines on. But the problem is, the light can't shine on itself, so the very thing that is looking never gets noticed. How do you look at the looker? How do you see yourself seeing? How do you get to the eye as opposed to the me? Whenever I come across a snippet of a speech or a saying like this, I always pause and try to reflect on the meaning of it. Truth be told, I was mesmerized and immediately knew that this was going to be a part of my next video. I went on a hunt to find out who originally said these words, but honestly the internet was of no conclusive help and even ChatGPT was confused. But most people seemed to gravitate towards these being the words of Alan Watts. Regardless of who came up with this, the point still remains. What does it mean? The first half is easy enough to interpret. We humans tend to see things as they are. You don't know what you don't know, and you know only as much as you can know. It gets complicated and interesting when we explore the second half of this quote. In my previous video about intrusive thoughts of an overthinking anxious person, full video by clicking the card, I touch upon the idea of shutting out the voice in my head. But now, as I reflect back, I realize that maybe I was shutting out the side of me that is, in essence, the objective part of me. Where I was able to view this other version of me as a separate being and hence see myself through a different lens. This is where it gets important to distinguish between subjective and objective. A subjective experience is influenced by personal feelings or opinions whereas an objective experience is not influenced by personal bias and is a more pragmatic viewpoint. Which brings us to the last two lines of the quote. Now, spiritually, existentially, scientifically, the biggest and most complex question to answer is who am I? I is subjective. I has an identity. I'm Tejas. I'm 26. I'm a cinematographer. I'm currently living in Singapore. I'm vengeance. These are all a collection of identities I've picked up or have been given to me by choice or chance which culminate to form the I. Strip all of that away is when you get to the core of who you really are. Me is objective. Me is the inference of I. Me is the acceptance of that identity. If I is the doer, me is the doing. There is no me without I, but there is an I without me. Subjectivity can stand as it is, without needing to be understood, rationalized, observed, or given meaning. Therefore, I am. Essentially, a person could live a life by simply existing. They are someone who does something and lives somewhere, without having so much of a personality. They're just a blob that is. But someone who has a personality, someone who can tap into that part of themselves, which is the core of their being, will be able to view things objectively. And it's easier to observe others, which is why it's easier for us to explain and understand others before understanding ourselves. This is probably the reason why it's important for everyone to get therapy. It's not just a place for you to unload your shit and have a listening ear, but it's also so that an objective third party can help you perceive yourself in a place free of judgement. A lot of meditation practices believe, supposedly, that transcendental meditation and the most serious forms of meditation offer out-of-body experiences. People live lifetimes in a couple of days and are able to see themselves from another eye, which isn't biological. The third eye perspective, if you will. But okay, hold on. The quote said, how do you get to the I, not the me? And this is why I was stumped because this is telling me to do the opposite. I should focus on the subjective part and not so much the objective. But I think there is a subtextual meaning being implied here that maybe one should be a little selfish. One should have some pride, not to be confused with ego, I'll get to that in a bit. Because if there is no one in your life who understands you or loves you or cares for you the same way you do for others, then maybe it's a good thing to take a step back and refocus that energy you are giving out to yourself. This is where it gets tricky because you are treading along the thin line between what is considered selfish and selfless. While I don't believe, and as Joey once said, Look, 
There's no unselfish good deed, sorry. What I'm trying to say is that actually that line is between what is prideful and what is egoistic. Ego is where a person only thinks about themselves all the time, where they refrain from being available to others and impose their value on them. Pride is being selectively available to others while still knowing your value. In fact, if you look at the etymology of the word ego, you might find it interesting that it comes from the Latin word I. I mean, at this point, I'm just... I think it's a good thing to be conflicted about such things, not knowing what the true meaning is. It means we are really thinking deeply about things and are able to have perspective of different sides to things. I mean, how many people out there are heavily opinionated and tend to not budge from their beliefs? Not everything is black and white as people make it out to be. How often will we just have moments where we say, oh, that was deep. That's nice. That's cool. But not actually think about it on a more deeper level and understanding. It is fascinating to me just how much of my brain is not being challenged enough in this day and age, with so much being so easily available. Everything is so superficial these days, no one has time or even wants to spend energy to connect to this consciousness on a more meaningful level. Even when we have the time and energy to do those things, we just jump to the nearest dopamine hit of choice, not realizing true happiness, awareness and peace lies within. Then again, maybe we shouldn't think so much and maybe the meaning behind the quote could just be mirrors. Anyway, I leave that interpretation to you and would encourage an open forum in the comments below. Let's find out what this means to different people. Till then, I'll see you in the next video.